Okay, a Krogan is playing baseball, and then instead of instead of waiting for the pitcher to pitch and then swinging at the ball, the the Krogan just walks to first base, and a guy in the audience is like, "Hey, what's the deal? Why why is he walking to first base?" And then the other guy in the audience says, "He has four balls. When you have four balls, you get a walk." <laughs> Those are the rules of baseball. Is that Krogan's got a quad? <laughs>start our show off with a joke about alien testicles. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosim. And tonight we're going to continue talking about Mass Effect 3 and uh, we're going to do some spoilers. I believe our um, yeah, I believe our cutoff is going to be uh, at one particular mission and we can spoil anything and everything up to that particular story mission. So is that how if we you, agreed to do that? Yeah, if you have not played past the Cerberus invasion of the Well, Citadel, that's kind of a spoiler in and of itself. That's a, that's a pretty huge... I, I'll, I'll, I'll make that all work in editing, but yeah. Yeah, just, just that's, cut that's that That's a up. huge spoiler. <laughs> Dumbass. I'm not really sure how you say what point you can go up to then. Uh, major mission on the Citadel... Or or the, the Act Two. Okay, the Act Two, act is two a good priority term. mission. That 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 works. So it's it's called Act Two Priority of the Citadel. Ta da! Ta da! That's that's the name of the mission. And if you haven't gotten to that part, we're gonna spoil everything up until yep, everything and then before speculate that. on everything after that is open game, so yeah. So there's going to be some spoilers here, but only up to a certain point, and the spoiler warnings are really only in place such that Pyro doesn't end up accidentally spoiling Sen and I, who have only played up to that point. Yeah. And actually, you've gotten a little bit past me now. Yep, I have done one mission past that. So yes, as we've said, we'll be discussing Mass Effect 3 this evening. Are there any other reviews? Is this a full review? The answer is no. To both. <laughs> we, we, will, we will talk about Mass Effect 3 again. This is not there, our There will be all. much Mass Effect 3 discussion. Yeah, this is, this is just we, um... We just kind of decided. Whoa. I just found a picture of possibly the ugliest Commander Shepard ever. Uh, have you found Fox <laughs> Shepard? No. I'm gonna go ahead and link this. There was one that was posted on Halals earlier today that was, it was the elusive man saying, we tried to keep you as intact as possible, <laughs> and then Shepard is just like Frankenstein. He's this horribly, horribly disfigured Shepard. Like, no, this one's, like, believable. It's just awful. I, I can't imagine, I, I personally can't play Mass Effect as anything but default man -ship. That That is And I think you're Shepherd. missing out. I really do. That said, there are lines that man Shep gets that female Shep doesn't. I, I always get confused when people... Like, th there is a sincere moment of confusion when people say he to refer to Shepard. I'm like, I, I can't figure it out. I'm like, wait, hold on. Who, who is that referring to? Oh, right, okay. And there was a and it recent... It takes me a second every time. There was a recent Penny Arcade about the exact same issue that... Talking... <laughs> wow, that face. Um, talking about Mass Effect with other players is inevitably difficult just because everyone is having such a different play experience. Indeed. I mean, I can't imagine playing the game without the full save of 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. just so because much as I read changes. last week, there were, there were all of those decisions that the game makes for you. Yeah, that and, are so far from what. Yeah, and, and dropping spoiler number one. I mean, the the scene where Morden sacrifices himself. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking at every Commander Shepard Halals. That, that there scene is now. can work out in four different ways depending on your actions up to that point. And Scumbag Shepard is kind of hilarious. <laughs> Yup. Oh, the facial modeling is sometimes very bad. So, remind me what exactly it is to destroy or not destroy the Collector Base in 2, because I actually do not... 
I don't know, know a what single that means person. Or what I did. I don't know a single person who didn't destroy it. Ah, uh, I see the joke there. <laughs> Uh, I, I probably did destroy it. Okay, so Mass Effect 2... Default is... is that you destroyed it. Yeah. At, at the ending of Mass Effect 2, you've got the collector base, and it's like, hey, this thing is making human reapers. We should destroy this. And the elusive man's like, nah. Oh, okay. I want it. Right. Anyone that, makes that is sane would have blown it up. But really, I wow the the halos that you are browsing. Really, you get a wow out of putting sunglasses on Jacob and making and putting Kanye, Kanye's words in his mouth, but you don't have even bat an eye at this one about Miranda's butt. Is that supposed to be Shepard photoshopped into the corner? No. Righto. The distinction between destroying and not destroying the, the collector game. base makes a huge difference in the Morden mission, among others. It, it changes a lot of the game, because, I mean, it even changes how the elusive man will react to you. Because if you don't blow up the collector's base, Morden will assume that you are still getting along. Or, not Morden, uh, the elusive man will assume that you are still getting along. That you are still working together. That seems like that would change everything, because, like, half of what you do in Mass Effect 3 is fight Cerberus. Right. The they... elusive man wouldn't think there's something up when you're mowing down his dudes all the time? Cerberus has just, like, got something up their craw and by the time Mass Effect 3 starts. But yeah, um, so I guess just the start of the game. Do, does anyone know why, regardless of what choices you've made, Udina is the councilman? Like, uh, Udina is always a councilman because there are four council members by the end of Mass Effect 1. Yes, so but even... I told them that I wanted Anderson to be the counselor. Hmm. I specifically recall this. I was like, hey, Anderson can do it because Udina's kind of a dick. Yeah, I made that same decision. And I That's don't know a good what the question because there. I like, made that decision too. I, 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 I figure I, my assumption, like, in my head... The justification for that is Anderson is, like, kind of a soldier at heart, and so it was like, Earth got hit, we gotta go. But he's there, like, before Earth technically gets hit by the Reapers. He's there, like, while you're being arrested. So, I don't get... Yep, I'm trying to figure this out. Uh... And if you install an all-human council by letting the Destiny Ascension die in Sovereign's attack. Does Is there a human council throughout 2 and 3? Because that seems... Yes, there is. ...insane. Why would a galactic government abide by an all-human council when humans are kind of nubs and tur wouldn't except Turians my, and Asari be like... That kind of got retconned too because I killed the original council in my save and all they did was replace all of those council members with other people. Like, they're still the same race. It's just a different okay. person. Now, that, that would make sense to me. It seems like in a democratic or even reasonably representative government, Asari and Turians would not be happy about having only humans as the head of the galactic government. But they would and be very upset you, about you that. You didn't give them a choice in the matter, essentially. And that's the problem. That, that is yeah, why human... once, once Sovereign is dead, how much power do you really have to keep them down? If you did that, well, their, their entire fleets were destroyed. If you didn't send the human fleet to go help against Sovereign, right. their, their military forces were decimated. You could have conquered them at that point. So they do not question it when the humans assume the council positions. Admitted, you'd think the galaxy would, like, be in an uproar about it. And right, they, that, that it, couldn't be a, a stable thing forever. And there's right. a fairly significant time period between 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. uh, about wherein... 3 years. Admittedly, in 3 years it would be difficult to completely reorganize a government, though. Um, in 3 hey, years, 
the other races somehow got enough military forces to meaningfully contribute to the Reaper War. Alright. So, apparently, at the end of Mass Effect 2, when Shepard blew up the relay, um, Shepard was in line to get court-martialed, and Anderson decided to step down from his council position to rejoin the Alliance military to support him. Udina took the position. Ta-da! So, is the Arrival DLC the reason you're in the doghouse at the beginning yes. of 3? Yes, even, even if you do not play the Arrival DLC, the game assumes that you did. It, but in my game, that no, specifically it, it doesn't assume that you did. It's, the it events, assumes the events of the Arrival DLC as though I was not there. It talks about the Batarians. And oh the no, because it totally exploded. blamed me for them. Yeah, no. It basically what it assumes is that those you weren't like you didn't get to see those things happen on screen, but they happened on yeah. panel. You just didn't get to see them. So yep. you did those things. You just. Yeah, because those, those were plot points that need to happen to lead to three. Also likely are becoming the Shadow Broker. That yep. happened, you just weren't there for it. You just didn't get to see it. Yeah, you were there, you didn't see it. Yeah. It I assumed that your Shepard did these things. Your Shepard I... was there for it, you were not. <laughs> right. That is not... That cannot be correct, because in my game, there was a scene where, A, I went into Liara's quarters, and mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, what the heck is all this stuff? And Liara is, I became the Shadow Broker. And my Shepard is like, what? No, oh, so, I guess it, he didn't have a part in it then. My Shepard knew completely. Well, my game made it very clear that I was not around for any of the DLC events. Okay, then. Interesting. That's and I think I got, I got the bad endings of those DLCs where bad endings were available because of that. Because Liara uh, says she lost a lot of friends in the in the quest to become the Shadow Broker. Yeah, there's no good ending to Arrival. Right, we've, Arrival we've only has this. the one thing, because it's only half an hour long and mostly combat, and then one forced yeah. ending. Yeah, well, the only real choice there was, do I call and warn the Batarians, or do I call for my own backup? And the outcome is still the same regardless. Right. Because you get cut off. So... Why was my shepherd in the doghouse at the beginning of the game? Because I wasn't around for arrival. You still did arrival. It's just it happened off. No, I, I did not it's, do arrival. It's, yes, it's very your, your yeah. shepherd did. That's the thing. Is it happened off panel? No, that you other also characters would have been arrested for about. being a Cerberus agent. Okay, well that that that's why. For like the events with still happen. My shepherd will... was not at arrival that other characters talk about the, the mass relay exploding and the Batarians being killed, and me not being there. They say let's it see. explicitly. Uh, let's see. Shepard did not complete Arrival, Overlord, or Lair of the Shadow Broker DLC, but the events of Arrival and Shadow Broker still took place off-screen. The Batarian system was still destroyed, and Liara is still the Shadow Broker. Yeah, right. but I think so it's the saying mass relay that he still didn't exploded. participate because Shepherd the NPCs didn't near. tell him he did. Mm. That's kind of neat. Well, find a Batarian and ask them about it. Hey, do you hate me? Oh, wait, Batarians hate them anyway. Uh, Batarians hate humans anyway. Right. Batarians hate everybody, because they've, they've had a bad life. I think you're thinking of Vorcha. <laughs> well, those two. Speaking of that, I'm going to link... Wow, VG Cats is actually updating once a week now? I'm kind of horrified by this idea. There's no way. He's posted three in three weeks. And by the way, yes, there is a Mass Effect related one. <laughs> so I guess we should start at the beginning with, uh, yeah, some of the weirder things like... Ashley's new character model doesn't look like Ashley. I don't think you two are dealing with her. Nope. Because I, if I, I have Ashley. Kirk, you have Ashley? I killed Caden, yeah. Okay, so I, what's Caden like? I, I'm assuming you met him in the I've Alliance military. I've talked to Pixie fairly extensively about this, and Caden and Ashley's behaviors are identical. That's They're both like, are you still working for Cerberus? I think you're secretly still working for Cerberus. Mm -hmm. Sure I am. I don't That's even think right. they wrote different dialogue for the two of them. It's just different voice actors. I would hope there's different dialogue when Ashley starts quoting Tennyson, because Caden's not exactly poetic. Caden's all like, 
I went to school for biotics. It was horrible. How them psychic powers working out for you? They're great. <laughs> I, I, I want to divert to... Since the two of you have undergone the change in the Citadel, did you do the mission with the indoctrinated Hanar? Yes, yes I did. At the end of that mission, there is a quick time event with a renegade option. And I... I don't know what I'm looking at. Did you do the mission with the indoctrinated Hanar, Pixie? Yes, I, I, I don't know what I'm looking at on Jeff's screen. This is the Mass Effect VG Cats. Okay. Anyway, you were talking about an indoctrinated Hanar. Right. There is... The way this is set up is that the Hanar is setting a virus to the Hanar planet to disable their defense systems. And because apparently you can do that with one virus because they don't have very good security. Apparently. Yeah, we, we, we kind of forgot to put up a firewall. Oops. And there is a... Ah, oh man. What's the race? Morden's race. Solarian. There's a Solarian who says... <laughs> The, the, the Hanar and the Hanar's indoctrinated buddies are fighting with the Solarian. And the Solarian says, let me die, go stop the virus. And there's a quick time event that says Renegade. And so I figure the Renegade thing to do is to let this Solarian die and go stop the virus. But actually, the Renegade thing to do is to save the Solarian and let the virus get to the Hanar planet. So I was like, yes. okay, there's, there's this Renegade quick time event. What I want to do is save the Hanar, and so I, cl I click the button, and everything goes wrong, and I'm like, dang it. Oh, I really care about making this go the right way. So I had to reload a save, like, an hour back, and I lost a ton of progress. I was like, no. Uh, this, is, this is the problem of the dialogue summaries not matching the actual dialogue taken to 11, because all you have is the renegade button. What does that mean? Yeah, it doesn't give you any actual context as to what action you are about to do. Uh, Pix and I discussed this, where, you know, it wouldn't be too hard to, to just slow motion the action for a couple seconds so that, you know, you can pop up a little description as to what that's going to do if you click that. What it really should have just been is a dialogue wheel with save the Solarian on top and save the Hanar on bottom. And well, I think the idea of the triggers... Uh, the trigger action is that it's supposed to be a point blank, you know, you have do to it make or not do it in a hurry. Thing. Yeah. Rather than the infinite amount of time that the NPCs will just stare at you if you have a dialogue wheel. It would be nice if there was a system where it was a dialogue wheel, so you could potentially have a bunch of options and text explaining those options, but also a timer so it goes whichever one is highlighted, because. How does it work to use the dialogue wheel on a thumbstick? If you're pushing in a direction, that one is highlighted, and then you have to click to choose it? Yeah, actually. That is exactly what it is. It I'm assuming like, you just click the option you want. Right. In, in the mouse, you don't actually click. The mouse works exactly like a thumbstick, as you move the mouse to rotate the ticker, and then you click to select. But I think a way it would be cool to do this for a real cinematic mode, would be that the the ticker can only be in valid positions ever, and then when the, it's time for your shepherd to say something, your shepherd says whatever's highlighted. It's, it's, you get the dialogue wheel like a line in advance, so you have time, but when, when yeah, it's... Yeah, for when, some of those decisions, though, you need that last line to decide. Yeah. And, and there have been times when I've, I've sat at a dialogue wheel for five minutes, but... That, that also might be due to the fact that you don't know what this line is going to do. Yeah. Tell you which dialogue choice I didn't sit at for five minutes. Caden or Ashley. <laughs> Bye, dude who stood on my ship for the entire game and only went on one mission with me. Bye! I guess I'm the only one who killed the space racist. Well, right. I, 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 I morally agree with your decision to kill Ashley, because Ashley is a chump, but I I had had Ashley in my crew, and I didn't want to have to respec everybody and re-gear somebody else. <laughs> so, Caden died because it was inconvenient for him to live. 
So I guess we can go over some early game spoilers then. Um, what do you think of the universe progress system that the game seems to be built around the war effort? I like it a lot. It's kind of super ambiguous because the bar fills up at 3,000 or at, at 2,800 effective military strength and the best ending is 5,000 military strength or better effective. And so the bar right. is, a, is a big fat liar. But my, my bar is 100% full. Right. I, the bar is 100% full at 2,800 effective military strength, which does not affect is not indicative of what endings are available. Right. So, the bar is a big fat liar. It really uh, was satisfying to the RPG player in me to fill up that bar in, like, really meaningful ways. It, it was filling up an XP bar in World of Warcraft, except the, the little notches on the XP bar are all, like, Shepard's mom or the Krogan being not infertile anymore and lots of lots of the biggest race of military badasses in the galaxy want to help you you win they're worth 850 effect well 850 actual military strength which is half that effective if you didn't play the multiplayer right um here's a question i you haven't played any of the multiplayer right i have played zero of it i don't even know what it looks like Okay, so... So we can talk about multiplayer! This will be a Pix and I thing. Um, the one thing I don't like in respect to the universe readiness bar is the fact that you raise the effective level through the multiplayer, and then it goes down. It decays. Every time you start the console. I'm sorry, is... I don't like to see the progress that I've made undo itself. I think it decays over time. I think it's like every day or Is so. there like an animation that shows the decay affecting your military bar? Because that would be heartbreaking. No, but, but like, <laughs> I like my the idea of the little, really... like, There's a little description at the galactic readiness right, thing right. underneath the map that says, you know, oh, the Reapers are pushing you, or the Alliance is winning in key areas, or something like that. Yeah, mine says the Alliance is winning in key areas, and yet my readiness is still going down. My readiness has always been at 50%, and my description has always been the Alliance is pushing back the Reapers slowly but surely. And that seems like a funny default description. It seems like if right. you don't play any multiplayer, the Reapers should be defeating the Alliance slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. That's weird that that's the default for the Alliance to be winning. So going over the system, I guess, we'll describe it to you. Um, the multiplayer is 100% cooperative. Uh, depending on who you're depending with. on your definition of cooperative technically it's supposed to be cooperative basically what you're going to be uh, to do is uh, you'll be dropped in one of the little side missions okay maps. so let me let me explain the plot relevance to this okay okay so you know how you do those n7 missions where they drop you like in like some very small map and you have to accomplish like a thing and then towards the end usually Anderson or Hackett will tell you okay now we're gonna send in a team to basically like, hold it or finish up whatever you just did. The multiplayer group is that team. Right. So you are military members who are tasked with surviving waves of enemies, holding objectives, and completing objectives in those locations that Shepard visited. And by doing that, you are making the universe more ready for the upcoming war. And so, by... In areas Shepard visited, you mean they reused the maps, so they didn't yeah, have see, to make yes. new maps. Uh, readiness falls by a set amount each day. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, they, they did reuse the map assets for this section. That said, there are six maps, uh, each with the possibility of three different enemies. You can fight either Cerberus, the Geth, or the Reapers in the multiplayer, and... Some of the combinations get ridiculously hard. Like, uh, the Tuchunkin, uh, wrecked area. Is that in if the you're fighting, single If you're fighting mode, the Reapers there? The area where you're defending Victus while he defuses the bomb? I want to say yes. Or is it the city before you see the Reaper Maw? 
It's got to be one of those two. No, I, th I think it's the Victus area. Yeah, I, there were several areas going through the single player that I'm like, hey, I bet this is a multiplayer map. Yeah, well, that area, if you end up fighting the Reapers there, good luck the second a Banshee appears. It will just wipe your party. I do notice that it doesn't seem to take into account, like, what type of classes people no, are joining the lobby. No, it does not care. So you could have, like, four adepts and be completely boned. Because... I don't think so, because the adept can just kill everything. The adept's like, yep, I'm going to rush things, and then I'm going to beat A biotic them. charge and the Nova spam back and forth, and especially if you only right. take one gun. But... Exactly. The, the adept is just but like But it's the good to have, like, a really sturdy, like, a Krogan soldier or something. And by the way, you can unlock different... If, as you, like... You get, like, credits for accomplishing missions and, and that such. Lets parts, and that lets weapons you and equipment. unlock uh, weapons, equipment, upgrades for your weapons, um, one-time use consumables for during the game. And also, you can use those credits to buy, um, well, they're little, like, chests that contain all of those. And then, like, a random character cla character race will be unlocked. So you can unlock, say, an Asari in order to play as your biotic heavy classes or whatever. That part yeah, is kind I of interesting because soldier. that has, like, funky free-to-play monetization stuff too, doesn't it? Can you you just yeah, buy uh, the yes. things you earn with points with money? Yes, yep. you, you can spend a few Microsoft points to buy those. It is 80 points for the, the veteran pack, which is otherwise 23. Thousand in-game credits, or the equivalent of playing two games. Um, so about an hour, you can, you'd say. Uh, forty minutes. 40 minutes. Each, each full playthrough session is between twenty and twenty-five minutes. So I, I guess the um, free-to-play rates are pretty cheap, and everything is unlockable with in-game currency. I I really don't see why you would spend real money on this, but then again, I I don't understand much of the yeah I can spend money on this thing that's otherwise free. As, as I look at the League yeah, of Legends... Yeah, I was going to say, how many uh, League of page, Legends skins the, do you the own? There. Skins, which how are... How many do I own, or how many did I actually pay for? I think so far I've spent a grand total of, like, $20 on League of Legends. The rest of it has all been uh, presents given to me. Because, you know, that's a real easy gift. And at the end of the day, Riot is rolling in a fair amount of cash because of you. Oh, without a doubt. They, they've got a, a grand, like, 60 bucks of mine that they can buy the office coffee with. But, yeah, I have no problem with that, because that's that's what you'd pay for a boxed retail game, and, yeah, that all kind of works out. Plus, they have and, server and costs. Riot has earned it. It's, right. I don't actually object to this free-to-play stuff in Mass Effect 3, but it is weird that they have free-to-play monetization inside a $60 retail game. It's just yeah, but we're also talking about well, at least for uh, for Pixie and I, Xbox Live, where you know, to do your multiplayer, you need to pay extra. Yeah. Yep. And they wonder why they are having trouble comp competing with other uh, platforms. So moving on, um, yeah, I I really like playing the multiplayer. I think it's cool that you know you have to get dropped in, survive 11 waves worth of enemies, and complete strategic objectives while you do it. Um, it's very enjoyable. It That said, there are times when the people you get paired with can screw you. Uh, for instance, I was trying to play yesterday morning, and basically my teammates kept leaving games in progress. And... There's nothing you can do about it. The game won't assign new people to join your game. It's just kind of silly. There, there should be no reason that the game can't just throw someone in or throw in a bot to replace the person who's gone missing. Indeed. Well, in addition to that, we have our own problems. Right. Where, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm... Other people I'm talking to, like on my Facebook list... Um, they're, they're managing okay, but for some reason we're having difficulty inviting each other to matches together. So random matchmaking works okay with you, but pre-organized matches does not. Yeah, basically no. what we'll hit is we will try to invite one or the other to a game, and it'll basically sit on the joining game screen with no results. 
So the problem might actually come down to the fact that you need to basically set it up as a private lobby and then turn it public once the player that you wish to join has. Because it's possible that the game is trying to put people in the slots that your friend would be filling, and finding itself unable to do so, your friend just ends up sitting on the joining game screen. Right. Just a thought. In any case, it's but a yeah, um, the multiplayer pretty sucky problem. A lot of fun. Uh, the other benefit that you gain from playing the multiplayer, which uh, I figured Pixie would have brought up, is the fact that once you have maxed out... I was a... waiting for you to be done. Oh, well then go ahead, if, if you were waiting for this. Um, so, you're, as you complete... Whoopsie. <laughs> Sorry. As you complete objectives, and there's like a whole little list of things that grant your multiplayer character experience points during the match... And as you, as you level that character up, and of course that level applies to anything you play on that class, so say I've been, you start out as a human no matter what. Uh, I level up my human, and now I've unlocked a Solarian for this particular class, so I can play as that and still have the same level. It's just, it gives you a different set of powers. Um, anyway, so you do that, and as you level up, the maximum level is 20. And if you can get your character to level cap, then you can import that character class into your single player games war assets and you can do this for each character class and that imports so, as as an asset or as readiness yes as a war oh, asset so that that won't decay over time you of course when you go to um play multiplayer again you'll have to start that class over from level one but ah there there's the the kicker but that's but sort promoting, of... You can continue promoting characters, and that'll contribute to your total worth assets. But do you keep your equipment, is the question. Yes. So it's just the level resets. Mm-hmm. Hmm, that might be worth doing. So you still keep all your weapons and equipment and consumables. It's just, yeah. I'll have to see how to do that. All right, so... It is. I guess we can start talking more story I, stuff. I'd, I'd um, like to note real quick that officially it is possible to get... Uh, more than 5,000 effective military strength without playing any multiplayer at all. But I'm not sure if it is possible to do that if your previous games aren't perfect. Because I, I had Miranda dead, and that was like the only bad thing about my save file. And I did all of the mining yeah, okay, and all of the, more detail the asteroid collection and stuff, and all of the overhear people's conversations and then go do fetch quests for them and my effective was only a little above 3,000 which leaves me 2,000 short which is quite a ways but as far as I know Miranda doesn't directly contribute to the she's in one mission and th her <clears throat> actual yeah. effect on that mission is completely negligible cuz it, the mission involves her sister, and I was like, okay, well, your yeah, last name is Lawson. The, hey, go do this for so me So I'm going to go look at this quest to see what Miranda would this do. This happened to be a lot in Mass Effect and multiplayer. She's there, but she's, yep. she doesn't do anything worth talking about. Mm. Uh, maybe you get more in New Game Plus, because I think you need to be in New Game Plus to get the best ending. But official word is that you can get the best ending without doing multiplayer, but I didn't nearly get there. Yeah. I think the only way to get it on the first playthrough is to use the multiplayer. The 2,800 plus, I think, is the standard ending. That's what the vast majority of people will get. And your ending is not determined strictly by your military score, but your options for ending are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd like to take a moment here. Um, okay, so from the Collector's Edition Strategy Guide... Uh, your N7 rating is the accumulated character levels you've earned for each class of character. The only way to push your N7 rating past 120 is by promoting your squad. So a rating of 120 represents all classes maximized to level 20. When a class reaches level 20, the player may choose to promote and send that class to their single player ca uh, galaxy at war. Promoting a class to the galaxy at war resets its level to 1, but it also increases your N7 leaderboard score by 10. Only your character's re level is reset, uh, weapons, mods, and consumables are kept. Cool. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Good to know. 
So can we start talking about, like, big moments in the story that we've been Absolutely. through so far? Um, I suppose we could. Should we start from the beginning? I'll just read off, like, the titles of the things to give us a prop to bounce off of. Sure, that works. Okay, so... Uh, do we really need to talk about, like, the tutorial, which was Earth, basically? We've talked about it several times, um, but... Yeah, so... I, I do just find it very funny that you're sitting there waiting for the Council to... Or the Earth Alliance to judge you, and you just see the Reapers landing out the window, and it's like, Told ya. I'm gonna go now. I also think it's... By the way, watch out for that table. I guess it makes sense, but it's weird that the Reapers could get to Earth without Earth having advance warning. It's just like, oh, hey, the Reapers are here. They're right here. Oh, well, they they kind of they did, like, like the, during the meeting, warning, you'll hear them yeah. go, oh, they've taken out the moon, or, you know, we've, we've heard these colonies go dark type of thing. It's just these people were not paying attention to these warning signs. Right. That's part of the thing is, you should have listened. And the Reapers didn't slow boat to the local cluster, so that means they had to have come through the local cluster mass relay. And there's not, like, a space station nearby the local cluster mass relay that's just like, oh crap, a giant crustacean just came through. I should send a telegraph. Anyway. Um, so the prologue is on Earth and escaping that. So it's kind of... I don't want to say boring, but we've discussed it to death. There's really nothing to analyze there. Okay, next prologue portion. Uh, Priority Mars. So this is where you and James and either Caden or Ashley go and pick up Liara. Um. On the uh, Mars archives where she is trying to dig up information on this Prothean device that maybe could be used to stop the Reapers. I really did assume at the end of this mission that they were just killing Ashley off early. That they were just like, you I know, was pretty convinced we don't need that, her. too. Well, you saw Caden get his face smashed into yeah, the side like, of the ship. Dunk, dunk, dunk. You'd think Ashley would have a bit of a problem with the fact that Edie's now wearing that body. Yeah, you'd think, like... It's like, that's the thing think, that like, nearly killed me. You'd think they would get all, like, jumpy or something, wouldn't they? Right. It's like, really? You let the AI take that? Yup. Yeah, no, I'd imagine, like, some kind of PTSD thing would, like, jar them, like, every time they saw her. But no, doesn't seem to be a problem. I don't, seemed, I don't get it. Uh, this might have just been me not paying real close attention, but the robot body when Edie was in it looked crazy different from the robot body with Eva in it. I didn't think they looked similar at all. Uh, no, the thing is, one, I don't know how much attention you were paying to, to that final fight. Right. Um, when you, she you, drops the human disguise. Yeah, you burned off all of its okay. disguise. Well, she was in a costume. So, yeah. It yeah. was, it was, it had, like, synthetic like, skin and stuff on it uh -huh. to, like, pass as a human. Yeah, but when it was actually in the ship and inactive in Edie's room, it it was the metal shell. It just was dirty. Yeah, what it what yeah. it looked like to me at the end of that fight was like a burnt corpse. Like it didn't look exactly like this, but it looked like a human meat corpse that had been in a fire, and it was all black and. No, it ragged. was it was just charred because the synthetic skin had been burnt off. Right. Yeah, you you could see she, the metal. She was bit. meant to pass off as a human, and that's why she has those. Um, facial animations and stuff where she can make those expressions. Right. Because Ava was designed to do that. I still so, get creeped out every time the ED robot smiles. If, if I were Caden slash Ashley, I would not have PTSD right. for the ED body because I would not have recognized it. Yeah. Alright. But, uh, yeah, overall that sequence was pretty cool. I liked chasing the thing. That was neat. Yeah, where I was like, no, don't stop just trying to stop shoot shooting. it, just no. run. <sighs> she, she's not going to respond to your bullets, just keep going. I'm a soldier. The first and last response I do to any enemy is shoot them. And I had to I had to keep coaching if there's like, no, stop, you're, t you're trying to take cover and shoot at it. Run, it, just keep running, run. It's not like my class has offensive maneuvers. The best I've got is my concussive shot. What I shot. just did is I just jumped on my vanguard. And the Vanguard's special class ability is the Biotic Charge. Yeah, so you were and just, so like, running was, into things back the entire way. No, I was just like, and then I, I would charge and then be on top of her. 
And it doesn't do and anything. And she just gets but away it sure anyway. made the chase scene go by a lot faster. I suppose that's the best way to test it out. Yeah, because she'll stop and wait for you if she uh, ends up beating you. And, uh... It's just meant to add some, like... Suspense and whatnot. Uh, Cle- I'm not really suspense, but, like... Clearly, Van- tension, and clearly vanguards say. just break the game. Right? It's, it's a gameplay yeah, so variation. So my vanguard would just charge and instantly be on top of her... Right. And it wouldn't do anything. So the reason that I always complain about MMOs is that one hundred percent of the time in MMOs you're attacking mobs with your standard cycle and right clicking on anything mm-hmm. you can right click on. Whereas this this represents a change in the Mass Effect model because a lot of time in the Mass Effect model you're shooting things, but you don't just shoot things. You also like have chases that are a one off element that this is there's no chase mechanic ever again. And so it, it's it's just a gameplay type variation that stands well, on its own. One of the things I, I want to note between playing this and playing like the older public, I, I constantly was reminding myself in the older public that there's no way to screw this up. The game is designed to lead me specifically to the ending that they Stipped designed. Up my cable. I, I so agree with that. I'm going to try and show this picture to the camera so the pyro when you're editing later you can see this right. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Anyway, down here you can see that that's totally the same body that Evie uses. Right. But right, yeah, I, I, and when I believe. When she climbs you. out of the fire, it I, is I that. Just, I and when Edie showed up and said, "This is Doctor Eva's body," it looks exactly body, I was identical like, here in this picture. No, it's not. I was like, "Oh well." You had that shipped in. I guess right. it must be. I accepted it, but I, I didn't recognize it myself. I keep stepping on this cable. It's terrible. But, yeah, the other thing about the Old Republic conversation trees compared to the Mass Effect conversation trees is Mm -hmm. Mass Effect is much better about giving you your conversation wheel before it's Shepard's time to speak, such that if if you know what your opinions on things are, the cutscenes play in a very smooth, continuous line, like it would be a movie. If you just removed the UI elements and somebody else was watching it, they would think mm-hmm. that this is just a, just a scripted cutscene. Whereas in the and older I've public, seen that. There is, there's always this waiting period where the, the NPC finishes saying their bit, and then there's this awkward silence while, okay, here's your options and you can choose. Okay, now it continues. Mass Effect gives you your options beforehand, which I really like. Also, there's an option in the, the menu to turn off conversation choices and just have them all be automatic, which I think is crazy because I I don't, I, I guess I don't object to it, but why are you playing Mass Effect if you're not making conversation choices? It's not that right. good of a shooter. There are better shooters. Come for the yeah, conversation if you, choices. If you want a cover-based shooter... Go play just Gears. That, right. Gears of War is ten times more efficient at what it does than Mass Effect is. But I guess I guess if somebody really wants that, then it's there for them. The other thing is that I actually, several times throughout Mass Effect 3, hit escape to try and back out of a conversation to try it a different way. And I see the value in <laughs> not allowing you to do that, but I kind of missed it. Because it was like, oh, right. I want to. Be, there's because in Tor, so many times what you click the, was not what came out of your character's mouth. When yeah, going into Mass Effect Three, I was I was thinking to myself, am I misremembering Mass Effect One and Two? Are dialogue trees actually really limited and they don't allow significant role playing? Because in, in the Old Republic, it was like, there's there's not a lot of options. All of the options are very similar, effectively. But I was, I was pleasantly well, yeah, surprised in the that, Republic, no. They had to lead you the same way. The dialogue trees are much freer. In the Old in Republic, they Mass needed to lead you to those endings, to those critical fights. In Mass so Effect, the merit in they're perfectly happy to letting... skip them. You two are talking over each other. Right. One of you shut up. Go ahead, Byron. The merit in not letting you restart conversations is that if it's like a novel or a movie and there's an actual sequence of events and it's a story. But just from my perspective, 
I kind of want to just consume all the content. I, I, I want all the dialogue trees written out as trees. And I just want to look at the tree and see all the options. Uh, this is a game where I will be this... very happy to read the strategy guide. I, I don't intend to play this game a second time, but I will read a strategy guide cover to cover for this game and consume all of the branching paths because I like it. I think uh, the issue the... with that is that the Mass Effect designers basically made the game so that you won't ever see all of it. Right, and and they're, they're unless you're willing to that, because it does give and a that there's going to be hundreds narrative. of hours of content that you will never see. Right, and that's why it's it's so interesting to talk about Mass Effect with someone because your experience is completely different than theirs. Yeah, it's like kind of like comparing notes, like oh, what is, all of that happened for you. This is weird because in mine it did this. Yeah. yeah, our shepherds made very similar decisions. But just on the grounds that you are playing a female shepherd and I am playing a male one, our games are fundamentally different. Uh, just, just our well. I mean, what, what's your shepherd's background too? He is a uh, space-born war hero. Yeah, which is also different from my shepherd. Yeah, and so people. I actually went with the default on that, but that was uh, only, only it, I only discovered that that was like the canonical like default after the fact. But the Earthborn. Earthborn soul survivor. Right. So the mother the, aspects. The no, the the shepherd that has experienced a lot of loss and you know is very sad. <laughs> I see. Yeah, my shepherd's like my life's been cool. I was amused by me trying to roll a new shepherd because my initial shepherd's background was spacer and ruthless, and I, I got into the new character menu and I was like, oh man, I, I've done this like two or three times. I was like, what do I want to choose for my background? I'm like. I want to choose Spacer and Ruthless, because those are the options I like. Which makes me really attached to my Shepherd, because I like I like those decisions. Oh, and you also mentioned that you get extra stuff just from those backgrounds. Pyro, from the Spacer uh, because background, you pick Spacer. The, your parents are alive, and Shepherd's parents play an yeah. active role in 2 and a, a slightly passive role in 3. Notably, you talk to your mom on VidCom in Mass Effect 2 if you have the spacer background and pursue yep. the right side quest. And you get your mom as a war asset on the Crucible in Mass Effect 3. War if asset. If you do the right side Shepherd's quest. Shepard's mother. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, Admiral Anderson says to you, well, we figured it wouldn't hurt to have two Shepherds around, so we got your mom <laughs> working on the Crucible. And I'm helping her work on more of you. What? Whoa. Except, wait, was that Hackett or Anderson who said that? It Anderson. was Anderson. Anderson's kind of already remote, in, romantically entangled. Right, and that's something else I want to bring up. The, In order to get the full Mass Effect experience, you, you pretty much have to read all of the novels and all of the comics and all of the web I series. I didn't read the novels, though. I, I did read all of the comics. But, but that's where you would have gotten the information about... Anderson and... Uh, and Kaylee Sanders. Yeah. As well as Anderson and Saren. Mm-hmm. Like, Actually, without... the oh, Anderson and It's supposed to add Saren something thing? to it. Those things are meant to add to the experience so that it's like an in-joke for you having done that. Right. But I don't feel like I'm getting less for not having done that. I don't feel cheated. The Anderson and Saren thing is covered for beginners in Mass Effect 3 a little later on. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know anything about the novels or comics. I, I have neither read them directly or know anything about them from metamedia, which is weird because I consume a lot of metamedia. And those, yeah, Kaylee Sanders and stuff shows up and you're like, who are you? I, I DK, right. and then you carry on. But I've read the first novel and I was like, Kaylee Sanders, who the heck is that? Oh, it's that chick. Okay. That that actually flows pretty nice because, I mean, Shepard is a busy person. They, Shepard just does not have time for all you little people. Yeah. I will say, though, it is refreshing every time you see an old party member. Every single time. It's rewarding. And, and that's something Bioware does incredibly well. The old friends feeling 
visiting places you've been, even though the Citadel has fundamentally changed in structure every single time you visited. They have not reused a single map of the Citadel between the three games. But it still feels like the same place. The same goes for the Normandy. Every time you get on a Normandy, something is different. So, I was a little annoyed that you can no longer access the opposite gendered bathroom on the Normandy. You could in two, but you I can't in three. Funny, actually. And it's still there, but you can't get to it. Which, I mean, anybody coming to Mass Effect 3 without having played Mass Effect 2 would have their- would be head-scratching the whole time. But if you didn't- if you didn't remember the bathrooms from Mass Effect 2, and there's just like this door on the crew deck of the Normandy that you click on, and it's like, access denied. You'd be like, what the heck is with this door? If I'm I Commander Shepard, and this is the Normandy. I go where I want. You open this door, Edie. If, if I remember correctly, if you went in there in Mass Effect 2, Edie would tell you that you're in the wrong bathroom. Mm -hmm. and that right, you which, which was funny, because, I mean, that's how you know that, oh, this is the wrong bathroom. And I assumed the, the, the little sign of women on the door was enough. That's true. Uh, she, she mostly just goes, um, Shepard, the... Women's room is over here. <laughs> Shut up. I'm Commander Shepard. I do what I want. I use whatever bathroom I choose. And if I want to change my tampon while standing over a urinal, I guess I'll do that. I don't know. Do we have space tampons? This, this is kind of a weird train of thought I'm on. Yup. The shark. We've jumped it. And there's another kind of spoilery image. Yup. <laughs> I was, I was looking in the tampon. back at, like, the, there's a neat little interview. I'll just cover that up. About, like, how they did, because you remember we were talking about how we were kind of impressed with, like, the facial animations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the facial animations, I think, are better in this and than they were in LNLR. The, the, the column I'm hiding from you is about how they did the eyes, and this one's all about how they did the lip synchronization. I've already seen the that. picture. I didn't recognize the person, so I think we're good. Okay. I'm just going to do this. Okay. <laughs> so, did either of you two run into the notorious import bug? Because, apparently, if you have a save for Mass Effect 1, and you did not alter your character appearance in Mass Effect 2, you cannot import your character appearance in Mass Effect 3. I ran into- I think I told you about this. I think I told you about this. Is that, um, when I went to import my character, all my choices were still there. But it but was like, yeah, we can't not. find what your character looked like, so start over and do it again. I always yeah. played it. They well. made a pretty good guess, though. <laughs> I played as default Shep, so my Shepard was like, dude, you're default, I'm right here. <laughs> I played as Mass Effect 1 default female Shepard, and they've changed the the yeah. default female Shepard in all three games. Right. So I'm not even sure if I ran into the import bug or not, but I don't <laughs> I don't remember precisely enough. Well it'll how my give Shepherd you a in. actual error that says, Hey, we can't find more right. Shepard. And it's, it's like a modal dialogue where you can't access the other things. Cause I had, I had flavor text that was like uh, reconstructing your personnel file. Yeah, no, that's that not was... it. There is an right, actual okay. like pop up box that comes up that's like we can't find your original save, like face thing. So you're gonna have to do it over. And so, so I had to do that. That bug exists. So, that's a thing, and I experienced that firsthand twice. How many crashes have you guys dealt with so far? Um... Zero. One. I've had one also. But I was also running my Xbox for hours. Yeah, I so, will admit, when mine crashed, I had been playing for about four hours. It's, my, my Xbox had just been running. Because oh. I, had, I had stopped it using the little... Um, the Xbox button, you know, that thing in the center, mm -hmm. to pause during a cutscene, basically. Yeah. Because my parents had to, like, go out somewhere, and I had to go out with them for something. I can't remember why. Right and um, I didn't want to miss this cutscene, so I had used the, like, little Xbox button to kind of pause it in mm -hmm. a cheating kind of way. And, um, and then I went out, and we were gone for hours and hours. So, like, six hours later, I come back, and I, I, I pick it up, and it's pretty okay to play through, and then, like, 20 minutes later, it, like, locks up. But thankfully, the game backs up often enough that you probably... It auto-saves pretty frequently, yeah. and also you can just hit the back button on the controller to quick save. So, right. I mean, it's quick save and quick load are already my best friends anyway, because um, I, I kind of, like... I, it's, it's not just for the sake of consuming all the choices, 
that that like Pyro does it, but I like to pick all of the choices to see which one is the best one that I want to go with, and I'll be like, okay, this is the course of action that I want my shepherd to take. Right. But because because so often. <clears throat> You'll you'll like pick the wheel and be like, that's not what I wanted to do, so I'll have to like go back and like figure out, or that's not the impact that I intended to have, and so I'll go back and I'll do it over again. And this is why I missed the escape key. Yeah, my best friend in the old republic. I'm very conflicted about that because I wanted the escape key. I also see an argument for not having it, but I think given the choice, I would I would put it in. Well, part of the big deal in Mass Effect is that the game wants you to live with this the choices kind of that like you made. Is. I know it's not. It's kind right. Of like you made this choice. Deal with it. That that's part of what Mass Effect is, and I, I oh, look, commend them for that. Look, I've got the list of that. achievements. Okay. I, I, I like that most of the, like, got through such and such part of the story ones are, like, just vague enough that you can't figure out what they're, they're about. They're at least creatively named. Yeah, so so that they're not spoilers, but then you look through them uh, after the fact, and you're like, that's not what it was supposed to be about at all! Nope. We've arbitrarily named these whatever we want. Basically. So, yeah. Like, um... You finish the curing the genophage thing, and it's like the achievement you got was called Pathfinder, and the description was explore a lost city. Well, that was just for and getting through the lost city area, but that's the thing, though. Some shepherds didn't cure the genophage, so it's the achievement it's giving you is yeah, you walk through that city because there's no way you didn't. Mm-hmm. The only way you didn't is if you died and then decided I'm not going to keep playing this game. I guess. So they can't give you achievements based on the, like, grand things that you've done. Shopaholic, visit a store. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. I want to meet the person that didn't get that achievement. Just didn't visit any stores in the single player campaign? did not go shopping at all. Did not buy a thing. Did not buy the fish feeding VI. In fact, that should be the achievement. Okay, so there's a... Buy the fish feeding VI. Yeah, we should. I want to talk about this fish thing for a minute. The pointless collectible money sink. I actually, I spent a ton of money on models and fish. Yeah, I've got a ship collection. I, I refuse to get the fish. Well, the problem is, well, I was kind of afraid of them dying. <laughs> but that's why there's a feeding vi. But they didn't have that in two. No, they didn't. They had Kelly. Which is ridiculous that they didn't have that in two, because, I mean... Really, in a military ship, you can't make your secretary go feed your fish? Um, if you sleep with her, you can. (laughs) There's your perk for sleeping with your secretary. That is your perk for romancing Kelly Chambers, is she will feed your fish. And then she disappears in Mass Effect 3, never Never to be be heard from again, which still bothers me. Especially since... It is one of the most emotionally divisive things in Mass Effect 2, if you saved Kelly or not. Uh, oftentimes, that's what that's what people talk about. I mean, all the other characters are emotionally huge, but this is the one that's so common that everybody talks about it in conversation. Be- because she was the completely innocent, like, lovable person on the ship. She's like and the then, one then who she has... doesn't come up again if you saved her. I want I want to go talk to her in right. Aspect Three for having saved her life. I mean, I had to talk to Jacob, and I didn't even want to see him. It's true. It was like, hey, it's Jacob. All right, you're the dude who stood on my ship until the very end bland, of the game. Bland, like unbuttered toast. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they wanted to make him a. I I I'm not opposed to having him as like the like. Here's just a male human for your love interest, ladies. And, but, like, he's such a boring character. He doesn't do anything. Like, your choices the, the are big secret a... info, the big secret information that you find about, uh, about him on the Shadow Broker DLC for Mass Effect 2 is that he works out excessively. Right. Like, and, and, has, it's like terrible, itemized... and has terrible taste in movies, because he likes the Blasto series. So, what, what the heck? I don't even... Anyway, yeah. so I'm still I, on this. I don't know. Thing. I think it's just as bad in uh, Mass Effect Three because, a- as one of your male romance options, you get James. James is also kind of the unbuttered toast of the ship. James reminds me too much of 
guys who play Call of Duty. Right, and I think that's what he is. Like, wh- one of the first moments where you interact with James is he is down in his weapons locker area of the ship uh, doing pull up, uh, reverse pull-ups on one of the uh, racks and, and refuses enough, to turn around and talk to you. Oddly enough, like, my strategy guide says he's not a romance option for anybody. Even though you can talk to him and, like, find out more about him and stuff. He's never a romance option. But he will hit on Femshep, like, constantly. Right. He gives he you a nickname. With me he, so like, much. he, like, mentions how much easier you are on the eyes than, like, the other soldiers and whatnot. Wow. And the commanders. Like, you, you, you can, like, make a comment on, you know, that, you know, you came down to talk to him, but you'll stay for the show. Being him working out. So apparently it's just supposed to be a flirty relationship. Uh, it's like a flirty friendship, I guess. But anyway, this fish thing, I'm on it. He's got a, th- can I, can he's got I- a thing where he gives people nicknames, and he called my f- female shepherd Lola, which yes. he does for everybody, I'm sure. And you have a dialogue option where you're like, Lola, huh? Or your other option is, it's Commander. And I was like, yes, because I'd been, I'd been annoyed with his insubordination the whole game. But we were... Having personal conversations in private, uh, like below decks in his quarters, and so I was like, "So you're calling me Lola? What's the deal with that?" And then I was like, "Okay, you can call me Lola when you know we're in hyperspace and we're alone and it's there's not other soldiers around." And then we we were on a mission later, and he called me Lola, and I I wanted to turn around and chew him the fuck out because it's like, okay. You can call me Lola in private during off time, but we are on a mission, we have our helmets on, and there are other soldiers around. Now you call me Sir. I am your commander, and you say it that like way. Being, I don't like being called Sir when I am a lady. Is that, yeah, he, it's, it's ma'am. He calls my uh, man Shep Loco, because apparently I'm a crazy bastard. And apparently there was just enough difference between Loco and Lola that the uh, the programmers didn't have to worry about coding entirely new sets of dialogue. Just as a like flavor I, note, most I, of that's automated, though. It's the like, convention of calling uh, military superiors "sir," regardless of their sex, is from Star Trek, and Star Trek had that very explicitly. Oh, well, I mean, you I, you, I you ways, get but, ma'am though from yeah. other characters. It 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 just it just you do get ma'am sometimes. in Mass Effect. That's true. Yeah. They just do it one way or the other. It's just, they sometimes fuck up and do it the other way on accident, and I I feel like it's... Because Bioware has this habit of doing that. Um, In games where the... In games where male is the default, where it always is. I'll have to... And, um... Wow, wait, I'm not me sure if the that is bad scripting or the deliberate right use of Sir in the Star Trek sense. You I, I kept almost suspect here. that it is not just a bad scripting. You endorse this. But it might just be bad scripting, I don't know. Um, Default man Shep for the win. No, Bioware always does this because they, they did it to me as way the fuck back in 2003 with Knights of the Old Republic where they'll say da 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 he, and I'm like, you're using the wrong fucking pronoun. I am a lady. You see this? Yep. The, the skirt part right here? <laughs> uh, totally indefensive. I c- could wear that. You just wouldn't want to see it. You, you really wouldn't. Right. He's got, like, no ass. <laughs> no ass. <laughs> In contrast to Miranda. All ass. Miranda compensates for you. She, she's, I, she, she took your ass. She I, go, I will she definitely go, like, say that, that I, I like how... The game is handling the non-Mass Effect 3 party members from 2. Like, running into Jack was awesome. All of the scenes Jack that Jack cool. is in are amazing. Thane was also brilliant. Thane was really, really cool. And I was like, wow, this is... He makes a huge, pivotal change in the story by protecting the Solarian console member. Right. And then I was like... Okay, yes, he makes a big change in the story, but actually, after that scene, you never see the Solarian console member again, alive or dead. So it's like, okay, and this was still cool, but... Because after everything that the council that member had done, much. Shepard probably probably would have shot him. Her. Her. Oh, that's right, it's the Dalatros. Right. 
Yeah, no. After everything the Dalatros has done, yeah, in Salarian Shepherd society, shot. the women rule. Right. Everything politically. Um, I don't know, Morden was handled extremely well. And in fact, their family names are derived on the, um, maternal side. Righto. Um, I actually ran into Jack again on the Citadel, uh, post, post attack. I haven't done anything past the attack, so. Manship got to dance with Jack. It was kind of cool. Just like dance in the club? Or yeah, like, yeah. Yep. She's, she's hanging out in purgatory. Huh. And she's like, Shepard, you can't dance. Everyone knows that. Like, no, I you know cannot it. dance. Shepard can't dance. Shepard still can't dance. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like... So whereas Jack gets like real dancing animations, Shepard is still just doing the arms at the side bob <laughs> no. thing. Well, you see, my Shepard still can't dance, but she does it in like a... Hang on. She does it in like a... Yeah. With, like, the elbows. No. My shepherd is <laughs> like, arms at the side, like, gorilla dance, sway shoulders. <laughs> For my shepherd? One shepherds, of those. The and it's only like, option... am I playing Saints Row 3 again? <laughs> With, right. like, all of the weird arm flailing bits. You know, I would like to this see... This could only be worse if they had done, like, motion cap caption from uh, Elaine on Seinfeld. Like, that. Yeah. That that is, like... <laughs> I, I would actually like to see all of the lines for Shepard both female and male, from Mass Effect 3, redone in the zombie voice from Saints Row 3. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see that. Just the galaxy reacting to a completely insane, clearly broken Commander Shepard. It's like, I think the cloning went wrong or something. Oh, <laughs> Shepard's not a clone. Okay, I think the cybernetic rejuvification. G- re- what? English explosion. You, you just made that up. Anyway, I keep trying to go back to these fish, and you keep sidetracking. Fish. I'm talking about these fish, damn it! In Saints Row the Third, it was revealed recently that they had an auto-tune voice for the boss that they cut out at like the very last minute. Okay, that sounds awesome. Why can't that be DLC? Because there's another character in Sansa the Third who only speaks in auto tune. Right. I don't know. I'd okay, like fish. to hear the conversation back and forth. Okay, fish. If if only your uh, if only you could have your own player character voice be auto tune, that would have been funny. Anyway, so this fish. So during Mass Effect Two, you could buy fish from the NPC vendors, and between missions, you would have to go feed them and like talk to them or whatever in order to keep them alive. There is something in my guide here, and it doesn't give away anything specific, but it says that if you have the Prejack Paddlefish that you purchased in Mass Effect 2 and you kept it alive all the way from 2 and all the way through 3, there's like a special secret ending reward thing. Uh... Oh, I, it has I to survive. No, wait, it has too? to survive all the way through Mass Effect Two, all the way through Mass Effect Three, and all the way through Mass Effect Three New Game Plus. <laughs> well, that's that's not quite so bad because you can have the fish feeding VI for both yeah. of those <coughs> Mass Effect Three playthroughs. Still, keeping it alive through two means you pretty much romanced Kelly. And or you could even, go feed you the fish your damn self. Kelly until you've fed the fish like 20 times between missions. Yeah. <laughs> I had the pie jack in two, but I didn't feed it often enough and it died. See, I was terrified. Like, I wanted to get the space hamster, but I was terrified it would die and that would be really traumatic. No, because, that's actually the one that can't. Because, well, you see, somebody decides that they the, the day my hamster dies and I need comfort to show me the pilot for pushing up daisies. Whoops. My friends are assholes. I just don't think very hard. <laughs> so, this has yeah. already been a pretty long show. We're about right. out of time. It, it, I know, we right? Still we haven't didn't... gotten to half of the stuff we wanted to talk about. So I guess like that's okay stuff. because we will have another Mass Effect Three podcast when, right. when you two are done. And, yeah, because I need to finish. And, this and game. eventually, I will review Street Fighter Cross Tekken. It'll happen eventually. So is that two D or three D? That is a 2D fighter. And the Tekken Cross Street Fighter will be 3D? Will be a 3D fighter. Oh, it seems easier to turn 3D characters into 2D characters than 2D characters into 3D characters. It seems like Tekken um, Cross Street Fighter would be crazy. The, the way that Capcom has been doing it lately, those fighters are 3D models. Right, they're, they're polygonal models, but their, their move sets are not geared for 7-way run. Right. 
And that's why Tekken Cross Street Fighter is going to take longer to do. Uh, we'll Street talk Fighter about Cross that next Tekken time. was, we'll just code the moves into a 2D environment and it'll be fine. And that actually came out the same night as Mass Effect 3. I know, because I was there. <laughs> it seems like a bad decision to release on the same night as Mass Effect 3. The thing like... is, I saw a whole bunch of people when I was going to, to the midnight launch for Mass Effect 3 who were in there buying both. Like, they walked out with two boxes. Yeah, well, and makes... without a doubt, it's doing well in the community. Like, there is a following for this. People are enjoying it. And I actually watched some, watched some people playing it on the demo unit. That said, there are a couple broken infinite combo chains in the game already. Because the internet can find that in a heartbeat. The Shoryuken community makes it their goal to find these things. Which is, you know, kind of good, because then they can get patched. Hopefully. If Capcom cares. Before too long, anyway. Right. So, yeah. We will no doubt continue the fine discussions of... Mass Effect 3, because I can honestly say that this game has affected me emotionally more than any other ever, I think. This, the, there was one particular scene which involved the death of a character, and I was, like, crying and screaming at my TV for, like, three hours. <laughs> it was Morden. Spoilers! And, and later, another one. We've said that Morden dies, like, ten times so yeah, far. We know that Morden becomes a corpse. <clears throat> What are you watching? I just watched a glitch in Street Fighter Cross Tekken where Mega Man broke the game. Okay, then. Mega Man? Yes, Mega Man is a playable character in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and so wait, it is specifically... Is Mega Man from Street Fighter, or is Mega Man no. from Tekken? He's from Cap... Me they Mega added Man is the mascot characters. Capcom. So Capcom's mascot character is a fat... Like, clearly out of shape version oh, the ugly, of the, the Mega, ugly Man. Mega Man. Yeah, it's ugly Mega Man from the Mega Man 1 box. Awesome. He, he is in the game as a playable character. Also, Pac-Man is a playable character from Namco, the makers of Tekken. And apparently Mega Man has... Is, is Pac-Man super eating a blue pill? And then all the ghosts uh, yeah, turn blue. Yeah, I would assume he just like belly. eats a pill, goes crazy, and then just eats the enemy. Yeah, the enemy turns blue, and then he, Pac-Man chops the enemy. I, you know, if leaving they, only his eyes. If he had something like that, where like he did quadruple damage, that would be kind of cool. It'd be like he has an X factor. It's and awesome. then only the eyes are left for a minute until they regenerate, and so they've got tiny hit boxes, yeah, and the, so the you can like almost never the combo off of that and respawns. Right. I found a Maximilian trial video for Mega Man that should be interesting. Maximilian knows this stuff. Man, he's short. You realize we can hear this through the recorder, right? Oh, I had muted it previously. That's Derp. Weird. This is why I'm looking at you like, what the fuck are you doing? Ah, I had it muted. It decided to unmute. Anyway, we gotta end this show. Yeah, this show's already at an hour and a half. So, yeah, um, in the meanwhile, I guess tune in next week where we will continue dissecting all of the really emotionally heavy and meaningful stuff out of Mass Effect 3. And maybe we'll make some more progress in multiplayer. And Turbo maybe... spoilers. And maybe we'll do that too. <laughs> and so much spoilers. I guess, um, anything else we got planned for next week, or are we going to just I'm, dedicate I'm the whole time to I'm thinking I might review this, but I might hold off another week for that. So you can at least expect Mass Effect 3 discussions. To There's continue. lots of stuff we could talk about, but I think Mass Effect 3 will dominate all of our time. Probably. I mean, supposedly we're also going to get another League Champ announcement this week. Uh, this would be Champ 94. Is it another AP Carry? Uh, no idea. They actually haven't announced anything, and nothing has been spoiled this time. As opposed to Fiora, where we knew her moveset, like, two weeks before she was released. Anyway. Anyway. So, um, in the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Parasim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. Catch you next week.
Man, Mega Man looks just cheap. 